dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,300 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring William Bill Elliott in Westward Ho, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, Wendell, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where each week, Hollywood's foremost motion picture talent joins us in plays we know you'll enjoy. That highly popular star of the cinema, the idol of millions of Western fans, William Bill Elliott, heads our distinguished cast of radio players in an exciting drama titled Westward Ho. Bill Elliott portrays a famed guide and able Indian fighter who leads a caravan of hardy pioneers over the treacherous trails and passes into the far west. Not all the pioneers are serious, nor all of them honest and courageous. As you ride with Bill Elliott through 30 exciting minutes, you meet the people and share their hardships and pranks. And now, here is an important message from Wendell Niles, then the curtain for Act One of Westward Ho. Your Army and Air Force are a means to an end. The end, peace. Maintenance of peace is the prime function of our armed forces. And this is accomplished in many ways. By judicial occupation of former aggressive nations and assistance in rehabilitation of their peoples. By keeping an adequate Army and Air Force as insurance against future conflict. And by many other methods. Give your men in uniform your backing. And now, once again, our producer. It's curtain time, and here's Act One of Westward Ho, starring Bill Elliott as Christian Latimer. Out of the stirring sagas of the great American cavalcade west, many monuments of courage mark the unseen trails that led through the uncharted territory to the western lands of promise. Trails were carved across the face of this nation by strong men and women. A land was conquered and won by courage that would not quail before the endless stretch of prairies, the high vastness of the great Rockies, and the constant threat of torture and death by the Indians. To this magnificent spirit of American progress, we humbly dedicate this story. The time, the last century. The place, St. Louis, Missouri. A train of Conestoga wagons assembled for the trip west. In charge was wagon boss Christian Latimer, the famous scout. A blacksmith prepares a heavy iron tire as Chris Latimer calls to a heavy set man on horseback. Hey, Pinky! Oh, Pinky! You right there, Chris, you right there. On the double with you. Uh, what is it, what is it, Chris? You like it up on that horse, Pinky? Why, yes, Chris, you know I'm too fat for walking. You want to stay up on that horse when this wagon train starts moving out of here for Fort Deal? Why, why, now I was planning on it. All right, then, where's that mule skinner you promised me? Or are you going to drive that last wagon? Now, Chris, now you said I was going to scout for you this trip. I said if you get me a good teamster. Chris, you know a good teamster scares his hog waller in the desert. Now, you know that. Now, give me time. Now, Pinky, just in case you wanted to sleep on it a couple of days, you know we're leaving tomorrow noon. I know, I know, and I'll have your teams to get up there. <laughs> What's the matter with Pinky? Oh, hello, Miss Genevieve. I, I guess Pinky's got his troubles, and I'm probably number one on his list. Oh, I can't imagine you being a bother to anyone. Well, that's very nice, ma'am. But I reckon Pinky wouldn't quite agree with you. Did I hear right? The train leaves tomorrow noon? That's right, ma'am. Well, what about me? You got that place yet? Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but there's been nobody pull out. It doesn't look as though anybody will pull out. And if I don't get a mule skinner before tomorrow noon, there's liable to be a whole wagon left behind. You know, we're so pressed for space that I'm not even letting Pinky take that goat of his, Arabella. That's how bad it is. Well, well I still plan to go, you know. Well, lots of others had their hearts set, too, ma'am. You aren't the only one that's going to be disappointed. Speaking of being disappointed... I'm going to be just that if you don't get over to the farewell dance tonight. Oh, I'll be there. You will, Mr. Chris Latimer? Oh, sure. Somebody's got to spread the wax on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody 
fish. Just look at that barbecued ham. I reckon I'm really going to enjoy this. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, Pinky, what about that mule, Skinner? Yeah, uh, you just reminded me. I'm sick to my stomach. Well, you better not fail me or you're going to be riding a hard board a long way. Uh, yeah, I feel it deep already. Say, ain't this Joe Vickery coming in? Yes, sir, sure enough is. He's looking for somebody, Chris. I think it's you. You're right. Uh, don't fool with him, Chris. He's no good. He's so low he can read by the light of a hot foot. Well, I know all about Vickery. Well, it ain't Chris Madison. Hiya, Chris. Vickery? Pinky. Good to see you, Chris. Thanks. What are you doing in St. Louis? Oh, I move around uh, a lot. Isn't that so? You know, I heard just the opposite. I heard the Wells Fargo people put a hobble on you. You're listening to rumors too much, Chris. I was clear to that robbery a long time ago. Well, that's fine. I'm glad to hear that. Uh... By the way, I understand your train leaves tomorrow. That's right. Uh, here you short a mule, Skinner. Well? I'm offering my services. No thanks, Vickery. Why not? I said no thanks. Listen, what's so special about that train anyway? Nothing that I've heard. There is, too. Something's going on. What's the matter with me? Ain't that good enough for you? Excuse me, Vickery. I've got to see somebody. Oh, no, you don't. You think you can insult me in front of all these people? Look out, Vickery. You better look out, Latimer. I'm going to take you apart. All right, you ask for it. Throw him out, Pinky. A pleasure, a pleasure. You all right, Pinky? Sure, I'm all right. Can we step outside a minute where I can talk to you alone? Why, sure, ma'am. I, I couldn't help hearing what he said about the train, Chris. Is there something unusual about this train? Why, uh, why, no. Uh, no, except everybody in the country is trying to get on it. There is something about that train. The reason you don't want me to go. Miss Genevieve, why do you want to make this trip? Don't you know that it's hard enough for a man, let alone a woman? There are other women going. But they've got folks. They've got families moving out there. Chris. Yes, ma'am? Tell me something. Yes? Is it true what they say? That this is going to be your last trip? I reckon it is, ma'am. When I get to California this time, I'm planning on staying a while. Oh, no, Chris. Say, wait a minute, ma'am. I didn't know you felt this way. Well, don't you be presuming anything. I merely want to get through Indian country safe. I know I have a chance of doing that with Chris Latimer. Oh, well, thank you, ma'am. And don't you be too surprised if you find me on that train of yours. Don't you be too surprised. <laughs> You've got to help me. Chris will never recognize me after I get all dressed up with this beard and everything. Well, maybe not. But I don't want to get my head knocked off. If I can help in any manner or means, I sure enough will. Pinky, you're looking for a teamster. But you, Miss Genevieve, were well, you just a little girl. I can drive a team of horses with any man alive. Y you've driven them before? No, but I can learn. Oh, there you go, making a joke out of this. Now I'm putting my foot down, no. Pinky. Yeah. Did I see you slipping that goat of yours, Arabella, into a wagon early this evening? Uh, 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 did you? Pinky, I just know you're going to help me. Mike, high up here in this wagon seat, isn't it? Now what do I do, Pinky? Oh, Dad, well, did you say you get up to start them and who to stop them? I can remember that. Oh, Dad Reddit, why do I always get myself involved? Oh, here comes Chris now. He'll be wanting to see you drive them horses. And don't forget to lower your voice. Yes, heaven help you. Hey, Chris, Chris. Yes, Pinky? You looking for me? Yeah, I, I got your teamster. Well, that's fine. Where is he? He's there with his back to you on that wagon. Uh-huh. Huh. Kind of a runt, isn't he? I heard that and I resent it. I meant no offense. All right, driver, take that team and circle around and bring them back between those barrels. Get up there! Hey, he's not taking that team between the barrels. He's going to run them between those egg crates. Yeah. Not them fresh eggs. Why, they're scarcely an inch clearance on either side. Oh, what an omelet that's going to make. Don't be too sure. Here he comes. Get Look at him. My golly, he made it. That's miraculous. You don't know how miraculous it is. Sign him up, Pinky Fast. And believe me, that is good work. I'm beginning to think it was sure enough. <laughs> Hey, here comes a soldier from the garrison, and he's really a hot foot in it. Mr. Latimer. Yes, Sergeant? Captain Hayes would like to see it once, sir. It seems to be very important. I'll be right over, Sergeant. Captain 
Hayes, you sent for me? Hello, Chris. I want you to meet an old friend of yours, Dave Bonner. Hiya, Chris. By golly, you're really a sight for sore eyes. Dave Bonner. Well, the last time I saw you, we were riding out of Santa Fe together with Kit Carson. That's right. You still like those dude clothes, don't you? Uh, no remarks now. I see you still got that big diamond ring. I thought you might have lost it to a pair of blue eyes somewhere. No, uh, no. No, not me, Chris. I just got back to St. Louis. I haven't had much time to look around. Yes, Chris, I know he won't have much time now. Why is that, Captain Hayes? Well, Dave's helping us out to get that ship and the gold through to Fort Deal. Oh, then you know, Dave, that we've got a big load on for Fort Deal. I uh, guess you can call $2 million in gold big. I wish that we could give you a military escort all the way, Chris. But, of course, that's impossible. However, your real danger's in the Paiute country. That's why Dave here's going to run courier to Fort Deal. Oh. Yeah, Dave will notify the commanding officer there of the gold shipment, and he'll meet you with an escort from Fort Deal about three days this side of the fort. Well, by golly, I feel better about it now. Well, I knew you would. Well, so long, Dave. Captain Hayes, uh -huh. I've got to get a wagon train moving out of here at noon. <laughs> There's a tension about the departure. The horses stamp as if they sense the charged atmosphere of the perilous adventures to come. The women bundle their frightened, crying babies into the canvas top schooners. The skinners check their lines and harness. Last minute chores are done and finished. Then the reverent steeple bell rings out, and down the long line of waiting wagons rides the scout and wagon boss, Chris Latimer. Finally, down the line, a cry. Up, Pinky. I just as snug as can be. Well, Sue, we're on our way. You know, I can't figure out what happened to Miss Genevieve. Oh, her. Yes, I, I thought for sure she'd at least come down to say goodbye. Oh, you never can figure out women, Chris. Can't be done. Say, I'd better go tell that new mule skinner to keep his wagon in line. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Let me do it. <laughs> Funny, I thought that new mule skinner might give me a lot of trouble. Now I reckon it's just the opposite. Sometimes, Pinky, I can't for the life of me understand you. Oh, <laughs> I'm just no good, local fool, crazy saloon most of the time. But I find it fun. We pause briefly from our story, Westward Ho, starring Bill Elliott, for an important message from our government. Aviation cadet pilot training is one year of rugged training, men, but it's worth it. Just ask any pilot in the U.S. Air Force. As a cadet pilot, you'll learn all about the latest, most modern airplanes, how to fly them, chart your course, engine maintenance, and many other interesting and necessary phases of flying. When you complete your training, you'll win your pilot's wings. You'll be commissioned a lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force Reserve, with monthly pay up to $336. And if you're especially proficient, you may win a regular commission. It's a great opportunity, men. But you've got to work fast now in order to make the next class. Find out today if you can qualify. Ask at your nearest Air Force base or recruiting station. If you can meet the requirements, get your application in right away. rises on Act Two of Westward Ho, starring Bill Elliott as the famous scout and wagon master, Christian Latimer. Slowly, the rumbling cavalcade moves ever westward, a white and moving monument of courage, weaving its way across the endless reach of prairies, through clefts and canyons, hewn by the invincible armies of the elements. Pioneers, these, pitting their strengths against the wilderness. Riding at the head of the train on his horse, Stormy Night, Chris Latimer, picturesque in fringed buckskins, watches the unconquered land ahead. The caravan fords a high stream, but Chris is suddenly very attentive to a sound in one of the wagons. 
What in the name of all tarnation, Pinky? Uh, yes, boss. What's that racket going on in your wagon? Racket, Chris? Well, I don't hear no racket going on. Let me have a look under the tarp in your wagon, Pinky. Well, I'm swearing to you, boss. There ain't nothing in my wagon except my ammunition. Well, I've never heard no ammunition blatting like a long-bearded goat. Throw back that tarp. Uh, all right, boss. Oh, nothing in the back except, except an ammunition, huh? I thought I told you to leave that galloping songbird home. Well, I know, boss, but I just couldn't tear myself away from Arabella. I was gonna, but when I comes to saying goodbye, she looked at me with them soft brown eyes of her, and it was like trying to cut off my left arm. When that goat of yours starts blatting an Indian country, Pinky, you're going to gag her with a wagon tongue. You can hear that varmint for ten miles. I won't have to do no gagging, boss. Why, I got Arabella trained so she won't let out a peep when I tell her not to. Yeah? Oh, I sure, boss. And just to prove it to you, I'll show you. Arabella, you hush up your fussing now before Mr. Latimer gets plumb round. Now then, Mr. Boss, she's as quiet as a mouse. And see that you keep her that way, Pinky. We don't want no blatten goats to be directing redskins like a torch. You won't hear another peep, boss. Nary a peep. <laughs> Arabella. Nary a peep, huh? I'll be talking to you later, Pinky. And maybe we'll be having a mess of barbecued goat before long. <laughs> whoa now, whoa, hold it, Stormy. Hey, what's the matter with that wagon in the river up there? Why, it looks like she was bogged down. Looks like the driver was dumped into the stream, man. Uh huh. Well, that's one way to get a nice cool bath. He's just climbing back on the wagon now. He'll get out of there. What's the matter, can't he stay on the wagon? Hey, it's that new mule skinner. I better give him a hand. Come on, Stormy. Get up there. Get up. Hey, you on that wagon? What's the matter with it? The wagon broke down. It fell off. You don't have to tell me that. Hey. Wait a minute. The water, Mr. Worcester. Well, this is a fine how do you do. Well, I suppose you had to know sooner or later. I'm sorry. Never mind about that. You know you're holding up the whole wagon train. Move over. Yes, sir. Now then, give me those lines. Yes, sir. Yes. Petticoats driving a four-up. There ought to be a law against such things. Get up there. Yeah. Now then, Miss Genevieve, you can take over until I find that pinky. And then he can take over. You know, if we weren't out so far, I'd send you back. And as soon as you can, you'd better get some dry things on so you don't catch cold. Onward, onward. And the cry is westward ho. The Latimer train moves on, and the Paiute Indian country is reached. And the day approaches for the rendezvous with the military escort. The place of the rendezvous, three days from the fort. Once in the Indian country, hearts beat a little faster. At the head of the column astride stormy night, Chris Latimer raises his hand and shouts an order. Wagon, hold! Wagon, hold! Pinky, come here. Yes, boss. Hey, come here and take a look. Do you see what I see? There's four riders coming out of the gully. Yeah. Here's one of them's wife. What's he doing there? Well, I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Pinky, you better come with me. The rest of you men keep us covered. Yeah, Come on, Stormy. Come on, get up now. Whoa, Stormy. Hello, Chris Latimer. Well, Vickery, I didn't expect to see you so soon again, especially out here in Paiute country. <laughs> They're very good friends of mine. <laughs> I thought you might like to know. Why? You're leading unprotected trains through their country. What are you building up to, Vickery? I thought you might like to buy a safe passage through. With what? With that gold you're carrying to Fort Deal. You must believe in pipe dreams, Vickery. <laughs> no, my information is authentic. Well, do you want a deal, Latimer? No, thanks. Don't say I didn't warn you. Come on! Hey, Pinky. Yeah? You know, this is serious. Well, why? Well, we're not going to get our escort from Fort Deal. No? As a matter of fact, they don't even know we're out here. Well, why not? Didn't they send a courier? Dave Bonner didn't get through. How do you know? You know, he had a diamond ring he always wore. God rest his soul. And I just saw it on the finger of one of those Indians. This is bad, Chris. Come on, we've got to get set for them. The Latimer train, encamped on a knoll formed into a huge circle, settled down watchfully for the night. Only the quiet prairie sounds, the coyote howling and the rustle of a hawk's wings. Inside the circle, a baby cries. But suddenly they came, swarming down from the hills out of the darkness in a wave of red. 
their shrieking cries like death itself. The sound of carbines returned from the barricade of flight and then arrested. Well, Pinky, I guess we've turned them back for a little while anyway. But we're done for, Chris, unless we can get some help. Yeah, you're right. I'm trying to figure a way out. They got us plumb surrounded. There must be 2,000 of them varmints. Wait a minute, Pinky. Now I know why I pulled up on this knoll. Yeah? Yeah. You take that small powder wagon. Set a fuse to it. What are you going to do, Chris? I'm going to blast a hole through that wall with the powder wagon. And then I'll make a dash for it. You'll never make it, Chris. Don't you say that. You get the powder wagon ready. I'll get Stormy. You're not going through that howling mob of murderers, are you? Somebody's got to, ma'am. And I figure I've got as good a chance as the next man. Chris? Yes, Miss Genevieve? I just wanted to tell you. I just wanted to tell you. I I'm sorry. I've been trouble to you. You haven't been any trouble. God bring the pig safe, Chris. Thank you, ma'am. And from the way you say it, I think he might do that. All right. Light the fuse. All right, Chris. If I get through, you'll hear three rifle shots. All right. Let her go. That's our signal, Stormy. Let's go. You'd think so. Oh, Pinky. Shh, quiet. Who was that? Oh, that's the Harris baby. Maybe I can help Ma Harris. Pinky. Pinky, did you hear that? I sure did. He made it, Pinky. Oh, thank God he made it. A signal. Three shots from a rifle ringing out of the prairie fastness. Those had been heard. Together with a baby's cry and the muffled sound of hearts that beat through the agonizing moments. A symphony of courage it was. The squeak of the wagon wheels, barriers passed and surpassed. Westward ho, and the nation was built. Curtain falls on the final act of Westward Ho. Our star, Bill Elliott, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. School days are here again. But in the Army, it's school days all year round for men who want it. You see, the Army man has the facilities of the Armed Forces Institute available to him. This means he can choose to take subjects from a great variety of courses at high school and college level. Many high schools and colleges give academic credits for these. The soldier can study in his off-duty hours by correspondence or in organized classes. And the cost, $2 initial enrollment. That's all. As long as he continues his Yusafi schooling, there's no further fee. That's one reason so many men interested in continuing their education are making a career of the U.S. Army. There are other advantages, too, such as good pay, security, chance for advancement, and many others. Find out all about the educational facilities in the Army, men. Ask at your local recruiting station this week. Now back at the microphone, our star, Bill Elliott, and our producer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've seen our star, Bill Elliott, in motion pictures, and just this summer, you may have seen him in his new rodeo. Now I want you to meet him as he really is. Come out, Bill, and take a bow. <laughs> hey, not you. Come here, Bill, and get that critter out of here. What's the matter, C.P.? Hey, Stormy, come on, get out of here. The Stormy has turned out to be a ham. Well, he's heard applause now, C.P., and you know what that does to horses. And people. That's right. The Bar Bar A Ranch Rodeo is back off the road. Yes, sir, and it was a mighty good season, too, considering this was my first rodeo venture. Did you take Thunder, your Red Rider horse? You bet I did. You know, Thunder's a high school horse. He does tricks. And Stormy Knight, he's a quarter horse, isn't he? That's right. He's a registered quarter horse stallion. And I used him in the rodeos for the cutting horse contest. That's where you cut out steers. He's mighty fast, too. Say, Bill, there may be some that don't understand the word quarter horse. You know, one-legged horse or only one-fourth of a horse. <laughs> yes, sir, that's right. Well, you know, Stormy's supposed to be mighty fast on sprints for a quarter of a mile or less. 
That's how the quarter horses got their name. You breed horses at Van Nuys Ranch, don't you? Yes, sir, just quarter horses. And by the way, I use Stormy in all of my Republic pictures. Bill, uh, they tell me a great story on you out at Republic. Remember that race last fall at Hollywood Park between a quarter horse and a thoroughbred? Yes, sir, how well I remember that race between Barbara B. and Fair Truckle. And by the way, I placed my bet on the thoroughbred Fair Truckle. And he lost his race to the quarter mare, Barbara B. <laughs> what do you suppose Stormy thought about that? Squeak, this is C.P. Mc... So, huh? Well, C.P., that's my cue to hightail it out of here. But tell me, what's doing here next week? Next week, Bill, and ladies and gentlemen, the popular actor John Lund becomes our proudly we hail star in a dramatic story, A Place in the Sun. John portrays a country doctor in our play, marries into society, and is on his way of becoming a great specialist. His problem is to serve humanity or to specialize in making money from the sometimes inconsequential ills his wealthy patients develop. It's a tense drama in John Lund's best acting. Well, I'll be tuned your way in. Goodbye and thanks, C.P. Goodbye, Bill. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we bring you John Lund and A Place in the Sun. Till next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. William Bill Elliott appeared to the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. Music is under the direction of Eddie Scavanis. This program is rebroadcast in the Armed Forces to the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, proudly we hail, next week presents John Lund. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.